Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are getting started with Chapter 3 talking about static testing and as a part of this we will be getting started with our first segment that is 3.1 Static Testing Basics and it has several other subtopics. Today we will be covering 3.1 Work Products Examined by Static Testing and 3.1.2 The Value of Static Testing. So as a part of this tutorial, we'll be introducing you to how we can prevent defects when it comes to testing. To get started, of course, we are talking about a quick introduction to what is static testing all about. So we have indeed discussed this in our earlier tutorials. Static testing is all about reviewing the work products and different work products do exist in our entire SDLC model and certainly they are a good candidate of static testing. That means they must be reviewed for any kind of anomalies, inconsistencies, contradictions, omissions, etc. and being reported right as and when they are created. It's, it's really simple to understand by correlating it to principle number three that is early testing saves time and money and at the same time one of the objective of testing is also to prevent a defect. Testing is just not limited to writing and executing test cases as we learned from chapter one. We want to let you know that in more detail that how static testing can be conducted and what could be the best possible benefits of having static testing being conducted early in the life cycle. So let's quickly have a look what exactly the introduction is trying to say and there are different terminologies what we are trying to look forward to. So when it comes to static testing, in contrast to dynamic testing, in testing, that is static testing, the software under test does not need to be executed. It's more of like statically reviewing the work products rather than executing the product or the test cases. The code, process specification, system architecture specification, or any other work products are generally evaluated through manual examinations, which are conducted with two different ways. Now, of course, if you're doing it manually by reading the documentation, it's called as review or with help of tools, that is static analysis. So right here, if I am talking about a document like test case, requirement, etc., which I have to go through myself, read it and find the anomalies related to that, I call it as a review process, which is static testing. However, when it comes to the other part of it, for example, things like control flow diagram, business models or code especially, then code is not certainly something which I can read and find the anomalies in. It could be any number of lines of code, which could be sometimes very complicated to go through line by line and actually identify the anomalies. So I need to take the help of tools and such tools or such approach of reviewing is called as static analysis. So just a simple difference. When you do it yourself by reading the documentation, you call it as review, but you do the same review with help of the tools, you call it as static analysis. Further to add, of course, uh, when it comes to static testing, the test objectives include improving quality, detecting defects and assessing characteristics like readability, completeness, correctness, testability and consistency. Static testing can be applied for both verification and validation. That means it's just not limited to only the work products which we create initially in the life cycle. It also works when it comes to the dynamic analysis or things like, you know, reviewing the execution report, defect report, etc. So uh, testers, business representative and developers both work together during example mapping, collaborating, user story writing and backlog refinement sessions to ensure that user stories and related work products meet defined criteria for an example definition of ready. So in simple words, of course, when it talks about agile, all the collaborative activities do take place and it's just not a one person responsibility to review the work product. We may invite multiple cross-functional stakeholders to come and join us in order to find the best possible defects in the static documentations itself or the work products. Also to add, uh, review techniques can be applied to ensure user stories are complete, understandable and include testable acceptance criteria. By asking the right questions, testers explore, challenge and help improve the proposed user stories. So put together, we do have different types of techniques which can be made use of in order to make the most out of the existing part of the process. And that certainly brings out a lot of value to us. Also to add further, we do have static analysis being defined further. So static analysis can identify problems prior to dynamic testing. 
while often requiring less effort since no test cases are required and tools are typically used. Static analysis is often incorporated into CI frameworks while largely used to detect specific code defects. Static analysis is also used to evaluate maintainability and security. Spelling checkers and readability tools are other examples of static analysis tool. However, we do have more specialized tools available to deal with different languages, but a generic static analysis tool would help you to analyze the code and find anomalies related to coding standard deviations or some mistakes like unreachable code, the dead code, the infinite loop, or the variables which are declared but never used, or the variables which are used but never declared. So all these kind of anomalies can be easily found by having use of this particular tool. So put together, introduction to static testing says that we have two different ways to do it, that is reviews and static analysis. To talk further, of course, we are talking about what kind of work products are good candidate of static testing. That means, is there any specific list of documentation or work product which are used or referred or reviewed using static testing? But in simple words, I would like to say that any such work product which you create as a part of SDLC, including business work products, the development work product, or testing work products, are by default a candidate of review. Be it about a requirement, be it about a code, be it about a test case, test plan, project plan, any such document must be reviewed for anomaly because we just accepted and understood in chapter one, as per the human psychology, human is error prone. A human can go wrong anywhere, no matter what they are doing, and that mistake should be found before we further interpret it in other activities like design and development. So when it comes to the work products which we must be making use of, so almost any work product can be examined using static testing. Examples include requirement specification document, source code, test plan, test cases, product backlog items, test charters, project documentation, contracts, and models. That means every single thing. It's just not that there are some specific items which we review. Every single thing, maybe, of course, uh, not formally, but informally, you can certainly review them. Also to add, uh, any work product that can be read and understood can be subject of a review. However, the static analysis work products need to structure against which they can be checked. So not everything can certainly be just read and you know tested, but uh, things like code and control flow diagram, data flow diagram, or business models can be done with the help of the tool. Work products that are not appropriate for static testing include those that are difficult to interpret by human beings and that should not be analyzed by the tools. So here, basically the third party executable code due to legal reasons. So we must be uh, kind of like restricting ourselves to that of those things which I must review before going into action, but not getting into a legal sanction. Also, our third segment is talking about what is the key value of having static testing being conducted as a part of the process, because it's very important for one to know that how important and beneficial it could be when it comes to static testing. However, static testing is not something new. It has been being conducted from a long time, but being brought into attention recently for a few years. That means people were not giving value to static testing at all, thinking that it is a waste of time. Come on, who does read the document? We look forward to find the bugs. But today, people are talking about prevention of bugs, which indeed was there from a long time, because ISTQB did not write this for the first time. It was written 20 years ago. But it's just that the people who ignore a few things for some time, but later realize that, oh, it was worthy enough to do. And today we are talking about shift left, we are talking about prevention. My question is, where were you 20 years ago? <laughs> anyway, so I'm not here to have a dispute and controversial talks, but uh, let, let's have a word quickly to understand what is the value of static testing being conducted. So static testing certainly can detect defects in an earliest phase of the SDLC fulfilling the principle of early testing, that is testing saves cost and time, that is early testing saves cost and time. It can also identify defects which cannot be detected by dynamic testing. For example, things like unreachable code, design patterns not implemented as desired, defects in non-executable work product. Also, static testing provides the ability to evaluate the quality of and to build confidence in the work product by verifying the documented requirements the stakeholders can also make sure 
that these requirements describes their actual needs. See, again, uh, the point being made here is why would I go through a requirement altogether? Number one, to find anomalies made by human mistakes. Second, if the requirements are unclear, incomplete, inconsistent, ambiguous, vague, that means cannot be achieved, I can go and point this out and make sure that we have a very clear set of requirement with us. Because starting to implement and then realizing that this is not something we can achieve, this is not something we can test, is actually not correct. Because you will be stuck or probably you would have wasted a lot of your time. So in that context, it is very important that you should look forward to review them in advance before you start working on them. Also, communications will uh, be improved between the involved stakeholders. For this reason, it is recommended to involve a wide variety of stakeholders in static testing. So indeed, uh, static testing brings multiple stakeholders together in order to review the provoked product commonly. And in that context, we do have a better communication established among the team member and healthy relationships. So static testing do claim that by doing static testing in your organization, you can have healthier relationship among the team member. The other point I think I missed since static testing can be performed early in the SDLC, a shared understanding can be created among the involved stakeholders. See, uh, sometimes we do find that there are a lot of defects which are just created due to misunderstanding of the same piece of information between two different stakeholders. For example, there is a requirement, I understand it as X and developers understand it as a Y. So until unless we both sit together and have a discussion on to we know we will not have a very common understanding at all. So we will always be conflicting or probably misunderstanding things that what it should be. Talking about other point that is even though a review can be costly to implement, the overall project costs are usually much lower than when no reviews are performed because less time and effort needs to be spent on fixing defects later in the project. So all we are trying to say that we may think that unnecessary cost has been involved by conducting reviews before doing dynamic testing. But if you find a defect in dynamic testing, which is related to misunderstanding of requirement, you're actually putting that time of, you know, uh, usage into a waste other way around, right? So conducting static testing in the beginning certainly can save your overall cost of doing your work more effectively, efficiently, and on time by just having static testing in place. So it's not that it is actually expensive. It's just that we may feel it, but over a long period of time, or if you consider the whole project, it is cheaper enough. Also to add, uh, the code defects can be detected using static analysis more efficiently than in dynamic testing, usually resulting in both fewer code defects and a lower, lower overall development effort. So certainly static analysis has reduced a lot of our productivity cost and the overall time taken to do that. So it certainly brings a lot of value by having static testing in place and in practice. So put together, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.